The subject of Alternative Views News Magazine for the evening is Boy Prostitution, the widespread use and abuse of male children for sexual purposes. Some of the language in the program may be offensive to some people. Admittedly, the whole subject is offensive. In 1979, there was a call boy ring operated out of New York City, which had phone hookups with Houston, Atlanta, Los Angeles, New Orleans, Washington, D.C. And that callboy ring had a list of 10,000 clients who could call and with a credit card purchase a boy. Hello. Hello, uh, this is uh, credit card number 06789. Uh, I'd like to make an order, please. Go ahead. I'm looking for a young male, blonde hair, blue eyes. Body hair or no body hair? Thick body hair, please. What age? Uh, 10 to 12. Butch or femme? Butch, please. What is your address? I'm at the Houston Marriott Hotel, room 313. Wire me $200 now by credit card and have $100 in cash for the boy. He'll be there in 30 minutes. Thank you. Thank you. In Houston, I, I give the figure based on, I think, prudent calculations that upwards of 350 boys a year are killed deliberately because of this. Many more die of drug overuse, mal malnutrition, of suicide. The national toll per year is in the thousands every year. Kids die violently because of this. It's closely attached to the major financial, commercial, industrial, educational institutions of our society. It's run by the same people who run those. It's frequented by the same people who occupy management positions in those. It's not the mafia. It's, it's an adjunct of clean business. It's serving the most respectable people we have in our society, the people who uh, are the elite. Prostitution of male children tonight on Alternative Views News Magazine. Tonight's program on alternative views is one which you may quite frankly not want to watch. It's going to be very disturbing. The subject is very controversial, even disgusting. The language in some of them may be offensive to some people. But we're going to find out tonight about the seamier side of the American power structure and maybe something about male homo sapien. Because the subject of tonight's program is boys for sale, boy prostitution. Where these kids come from, how they're used, how they're abused, tortured, killed, used sexually, and who is it that's doing it? We find some very shocking things are happening. We have with us Tom Philpott, the History Department of the University of Texas, is a special guest. And in addition, Mark McKinnon, former editor of the Daily Texan at the university. Tom has been doing a lot of research on the subject, and Mark was involved in some articles, very controversial articles, a couple of years ago. Well, I'm drained already after talking to you people for a couple of days about this subject. I'm absolutely shocked and 
I feel degraded too as a member of the human race. Tom, can you first give a case history, uh, just a, kind of a typical case history, and then we'll talk in greater detail about what happens. All right, I, I can tell you the biography of a little kid from a hollow in West Virginia whose mom and dad went to Houston to find work. They thought that Houston was the capital of opportunity in America. The dad went out there to get a job, a low-level job with an oil company, brought the mother, then set, sent for little Jimmy and his little brother. Jimmy and his brother got to Houston on a Greyhound bus, and his dad and mom failed to pick him up. How old were they? Jimmy at that time was 12 and his little brother was six. They spent the night in the terminal, uh, Jimmy fending off the advances of a number of men. And then the dad came to pick him up the next morning. The parents had both gotten drunk and forgotten to pick up the kids. The boys went to live with their parents. The parents both had severe drinking problems. The dad lost his job. The mother got killed in a car wreck. The little boy was severely injured. Jimmy dropped out of school to try to hustle, was his word, money to help keep the family, what was left of it, together. The dad died uh, choking in his own vomit after a drinking bout. And Jimmy was the sole support of himself and his little brother. The rent was coming round and Jimmy had no money. And then a neighbor kid said to him, you can get $10 just for watching me play with a man. And Jimmy said, that's queer. And his friend said, it's not queer if the guy does it to you. If you just let it happen and all you have to do is watch. Jimmy did it. Then the man offered Jimmy $25 uh, to let the man play with Jimmy. And Jimmy took it, so he had $35. And then he got introduced into the routine. Jimmy was little, uh, only 12, and he was small for his age. And the circuit he went on in Houston was not the main one, which is Montrose. He went to a place nearby, an arcade called Funland. The way that worked was the boys would stand by the machines, and a man would come by. If the man offered quarters, the boy would take them, and then the man and the boy would go off. Jimmy became a professional prostitute at the age of 12. He survived in that capacity until he was 14. Was he working on his own or was he part of an organization? He was not part of an organization. He was what they call the Farm League. And he was taking care of his little brother. His brother got killed in a car wreck when he was driving with some people. And Jimmy then was desolate and almost destitute. Uh, he used the last money he had to bury his brother. He did not want to let his last surviving relative, his grandpa in West Virginia, know the way things had gone. Uh, a reporter in Houston last saw Jimmy across the street from Funland, and a man who used to pay boys for sex then told this reporter, I know that boy. He told a man who's a friend of mine that one time he was having sex with that little boy and then he realized that the boy was crying and he looked up and saw that the boy was sucking his own thumb and at that point he had to break off the encounter. The journalist believes that this reformed man who used to use boys was his own best friend, the boy who had been having sex with Jimmy. Jimmy disappeared. His body was later found mutilated, and his grandfather was notified. The police then told the grandpa in a very cruel way that the grandpa shouldn't try to get a loan from the city of Houston. It would have cost $500 to ship the body to, ship the body to West Virginia because the boy was nothing but a harbor whore or worse. Um, and the grandpa died shortly thereafter. Uh, the whole family is dead now. Jimmy was a typical kid. He wasn't looking for this life. He found it. He needed some means of support. He took what he could get, and he came to grief, 
and met his death. 